The other day, I did a survey, and the results were shocking. 75% of you who watch this channel and who follow me on LinkedIn do not have a data portfolio. Now, this means that even if you have a terrible data portfolio, you're already in the top 25%. Now, imagine if you had a truly great and unique and professional data portfolio then it would really make you stand out in today's job market, right? I've reviewed so many data portfolios over the past year or so, and I'm here today to show you the top three mistakes that people make and how you can easily and quickly fix them. So let's move on to mistake number one, poor presentation. And before showing you a really poor presentation, let me give you an idea of what a good presentation looks like of your portfolio. So this is my own ultimate data portfolio, the one that I use for my own job applications. I built it in Notion, and Notion is a completely free tool, so you can build it in whatever you want to, Google Doc, Google Sheets, Google Slides, or build up a website, I don't care. But you wanna make it look nice. And what do I mean by nice? So when you arrive into my portfolio, you get a little button here. And when you click into this button, I actually have a loom recording right here. This is gonna start playing. There you go. And then it basically, you know, it's just me walking through my audience of what my portfolio contains, why I did what I did, what the projects are about. So in this case, my audience would be the recruiters and the hiring managers. Then back onto the homepage. I have some information about myself, my technical skills and my soft skills, and then I move on to the projects. So today I thought I would just pick a specific project, this flight delays and cancellations ETL pipeline build in AWS, because I have this exact project on my GitHub page as well, and you'll see the difference quickly between what good presentation looks like and what poor presentation looks like. So good presentation, in this case means that you see all the tooling at the top right here. Redshift, Python, PySpark, SQL. You see what the project type is, you see the link to the GitHub page, and then you see a quick description. And also with that, as I scroll along, you can see that I give you the summary really quickly. And I give you the summary in plain, simple English. So goal, process, and highlights. Super simple, even if you're non-technical, which is highly likely to be the case with the recruiters, they will be able to understand because anyone could, because I wrote it in plain, simple English. I'm speaking in layman's terms here, and I walk the people through, you know, my project. What's happening here, the main tooling used, handling different scenarios. There's nothing crazy about this page. Now, let's look at my GitHub page, which is uh, how my projects used to look like, and I don't think it's the best way to present it, but hey, here we go. So. I have a lot of code here, um, probably doesn't mean anything, you know, to most people. I would say 99% of the people who would look at this, they'd be like, what the hell is this? I included an image of an ETL pipeline, fantastic, okay. I have another Python file with some code, and then I have my main project file, which is a Jupyter notebook, and I mean, it's not bad, I would say the write-up, but I think it's probably just not easy on the eyes. If I was a recruiter, I'm not too sure how I would feel about this. It's not bad, but when I look at this versus, you know, my GitHub page, come on, let's be honest. This looks so much nicer. And the whole thing about this is that, so this is what I call the, the top level page or the summary page for my project. This is for both the technical and the non-technical people. And then as I move on, I have a little detailed report page here. When I say little, actually, it is quite extensive. So when you come in here, you see the table of contents straight away, project summary, environment, scope and project steps, all the way to supporting functions and code. So if I come in here, you'll see roughly the same code, but this is just such a nicer and neater way to present it. So this actually contains everything for anybody who would be interested in the technical details. So let me just go into ETL, for example, and main ETL process, and you can see that I documented the whole thing. You can see it clearly step by step. So please, using whatever tooling you can, make sure that you focus on presentation and instead of having a presentation like this one right here with all, you know, with all of this code, please spend the time and spend the effort to create a visually appealing portfolio. 
you don't have to use Notion. I do recommend Notion. I think it's a great tool. It is completely free. And uh, it is my go-to tool for a bunch of things. You can do it in other stuff as well. I think you can absolutely build a stunning data portfolio in Google Doc as well, or a Google Slide. Completely possible. With that said, let me move on to mistake number two. And this is a huge mistake that I also see pretty much everybody make. Minimal or no documentation. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me pick a specific project here and let me pick bank customer churn. So again, this is one of my Tableau projects. It's about data visualization. Everything is the same. You see the summary, the goal, the process, the insights really quickly. Now, I have this dashboard in Tableau, obviously, as a story, so you can click through it and you see all the insights I came up with, or rather all the insights that you would probably have to take away by looking at each of these pages. So this is not bad, it looks good. I see that it's a story, it is Tableau, it showcases that you definitely have technical skills, but does it really make you stand out? I don't know. So let me just go back to the way I presented it here. So when I go into this specific project, it's not even the, the front page, the summary page I wanna show you. Though you can see here clearly that I'm giving you the insights. So you don't have to look for it. If you just go right to the top here, I'm giving you the insights and I'm giving you the segments that in my opinion, churn at much higher rates compared to the other segments. But let me just go to the detailed report page. So once I come in here, again, you're faced with project summary, project environment, scope and project steps. So again, project steps, you know, I outline the exact steps that I'm doing, data sources, data gathering, there you go, worksheet build. So I, I literally, I show you how I did the whole thing. It's documentation done right. And this is such a big mistake that I see honestly, almost everybody make is that you create a dashboard and then you don't document it. But I did, and trust me, this will make you stand out. So no matter what you're doing, it can be a dashboard, an SQL project, an Excel project, it doesn't matter what the project is, please make sure you document it because minimal or no documentation is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make with their data portfolios. And trust me, if you have this, you'll definitely have an advantage when it comes to data portfolios. All right, so we're two huge mistakes down. Let me move on to mistake number three, which is using generic data sets. Please do not do this. So don't use the Superstore, the Netflix, the what else is out there, Olympics, Titanic data sets. Please do not do this. I've seen these data sets a million times and I'm sure recruiters have as well and other people who already work in the industry. So please come up with something unique. Now you can analyze your own finances, maybe use some dummy data, of course, or you can analyze your fitness data. It's available to you. But if you wanna go online and search for data sets, there are many, many good places to search for data sets. So you don't end up with the typical Superstore, Titanic, Olympics, and Netflix, I think I mentioned before. So you don't end up with these data sets. Let me show you some websites that you can go to. So the first one is very, very simple, Data Hub. You get really interesting data sets around you know, various topics, air pollution, climate, commodities, coronavirus, even though I'm pretty sure we're a bit you know, sick of using these data sets as well. Football, education, inflation, whatever, stock market. I'm just gonna pick something. You can go in and there's a bunch of data here. Please use Data Hub. It's really, really good. Lots of interesting data. World Bank data, I really enjoy working with. So they have so much data. I mean, just go in here, have a browse. This is one place where you could definitely find really good data sets. You can also use Google dataset search and obviously search for anything. You know, it can be football, NFL Monday night, football average viewers, 2015 to 2023. Fine, use that. I think it's quite unique, right? Or another Google dataset search place would be Google BigQuery. So you can come in here and you can also look for a bunch of interesting data sets. Again, two Google places to look at. One would be Google dataset search and then the other one, Google BigQuery. And then last, but probably not least, awesome public data sets. I think this one is actually quite famous or at least fairly popular and well-known, I would say. But again, they divide it up into various categories. I mean, just look how much data you have here. So I have definitely not explored all of the data sets here, but if you want something 
super exciting, maybe not economics, which is what I studied. Um, you could go with, <laughs> I don't know what's interesting to you, finance, government, whatever the hell is interesting for you, you'll find it here. You could go into healthcare, look at PhysioBank databases, for example. Let me just click on that and then there you go. You can end up with unique data sets that I think recruiters and hiring managers would appreciate in the sense that they don't have to face another project with a data set they've seen a million times. All right, that's about it. I really wanted to keep today's video short and snappy. These are the top three mistakes I see people constantly make with their data portfolios. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out everything on my website at mochan.info. My portfolio as the ultimate data portfolio is on there as well. I also have a free newsletter that you can join where I teach you how to create projects, how to apply to jobs, and all sorts of things career related in the tech and data domain. So if you enjoyed this video, please check out the website, subscribe, like the video. Thank you so, so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you soon.